Welcome to our tutorial on the Z22G phone. This is an easy to use, cost effective business IP phone with a color display, dedicated line keys, and dual gigabit Ethernet port with power over Ethernet. If your company has our UC client Zach, all our phones are completely compatible with it, so you can control your phone calls from your desktop application or by pressing buttons on this phone. For this video, we will be using phone buttons only. Check out our videos on Zach to find out how to control your phone calls from your desktop application. First, let's get familiar with the phone's layout. At the top is a 320 pixel by 240 pixel color display. Next, in the phone's top right corner is a message waiting indicator. It will flash when you get an incoming call or when you have a voice message that you haven't checked yet. To clear this light, you'll need to mark any new message as read. You can do it by listening through the entire message and marking it as complete. You can do that through Zach or Zeltsys mobile app. Or if your system administrator configured your Zeltsys system to send you emails with new voice messages attached. Depending on this setting, you may need to mark the email message as read or delete it to clear the blinking light on your phone. Please note this light blinks for both calls to your extension and any groups you're logged into. Below the screen are four contact sensitive buttons. They correspond to the keys currently displayed on the screen and what they do varies based on the situation. For example, while phone is an idle with no active call, the options are menu, do not disturb, pick up from bark and contacts. Moving down on the phone are the directional keys button. You can use these to navigate the menus. Right directional key doubles as the end call button. Over here are the line keys. You can have up to two simultaneous calls, one call active and the other one on hold. When you are talking on a call on line one, the key will light up solid red. If you place the call on hold, the light will start flashing yellow. And to the left of the directional pad are keys for the contact directory and the key you can press to check your messages. Next is the dial pad. It's pretty self-explanatory. When you finish dialing a number, you can press send key on the hash button to initiate a call. It works like a cell phone send button. To the side of the dial pad are a few more functional buttons. This button lets you adjust the volume. To mute your audio, use the mute key, then tap it again to unmute. On the right is the headset button. If you're using a headset, you can use the headset button to switch the call to headset. Z22G requires an optional EHS adapter to function with headsets. There are two types of adapters for popular brands of headsets. One for Jabra headsets and another for Plantronics or Polycom headsets. Please ask your Zeltus reseller specifically for the type of EHS adapter that corresponds to your headset manufacturer. Anyway, back to the phone buttons. To quickly call back a number you just dial, hit a redial. And then there is the speaker button. So now that you know what is on your phone, let's see it in action. Let's answer a call. I can either pick up the receiver or I can click the speaker key to immediately answer a call on speaker. If you have a headset connected, you can answer the call with your headset by clicking the headset button. Of course, you can also click the button on the headset itself. To make an outbound call, dial the number and pick up the receiver. Or you can click the send key or the speaker key. This way the call will immediately ring on speaker. And click on the headset button to hear the call's audio in your headset. To end the call, you can hang up the receiver or tap the speaker to end a call if you're using a speaker. Or you can press the end call button here. What if I missed a call? There is now a message about missed call on my screen. The rightmost contextual key is OK. Press it to view the missed call info. You can conveniently call this person back right from the screen. If the caller leaves a message, the message waiting indicator will flash. I can use the navigational key to select the message icon on the screen and press OK to view the messages. Or I can click on message key here. To access your voicemail, you will need to provide the voicemail password. The first time you access the voicemail box, you will be prompted to set up a password and record your name and greeting. This is a very straightforward process, just follow the instructions and it will only take a few minutes. Let's see what other options I have while on an active call. First of all, I can place the call on hold. 
To place the call on hold, press the hold soft key up here. To go back to the call, press the resume soft key. I can park a call so that a coworker can pick it up from another device. I press the park key and I will get a message on what slot it's parked in. To pick up a call, press the pick up soft key and type the number of the park slot, then dial. You can transfer calls to your coworkers or to numbers outside your organization. There are several ways to transfer the call. And the way you use depends on whether you want to transfer the call immediately, whether you want to check if the number you are transferring to is valid first, or you may want to talk with the other person before you complete the transfer. For example, I'm on a call with my coworker Tessa, who is having difficulty accessing her email. I want to transfer to her to our IT department. I click the trans soft key. The call is placed on hold automatically and then I enter the extension. Lastly, I press the trans soft key again to complete the process. And now Tessa is talking to IT. For the next example, I want to make sure there's someone at the IT department before I complete the transfer. I don't want to transfer Tessa and have her call end up in the voicemail. I'll do a semi-attended transfer. I click the trans key, dial the extension, then I press send. So the line is ringing, so there's somebody to answer the call. Now I press the trans key again and connect Tessa to the IT department extension. For attended transfer, I want to talk to the IT department first before transferring my coworker there. For example, I'm not sure if this is an issue with Tessa's email or if it's something system wide. The first few steps are the same as the previous example. I press the trans key, dial the extension, then send. But this time, I stay on the line until the call is answered. Hey John, I'm talking to Tessa on the other line and she can't access her email. You want me to transfer her to you? No problem. I press the trans key again and this completes the process. Or wait, I don't need to transfer the call? Looks like IT is rebooting the email server and Tessa just needs to wait a few minutes for her connection to be restored. In that case, I press the key here to end my call to IT. I can resume my call with Tessa. Another thing I can do while on a call is create a three-way conference. I'm on a call with Tessa and this time we're both having issues with our email. I'd like to conference in our IT and get this issue resolved. I press the conf key. This places the call with Tessa on hold. I enter the extension, then send. By the way, this can be a number outside of your organization too. Hey John, Tessa and I are both having issues with email. I can't send new emails, but she can't log in at all. Can I conference you in so we can troubleshoot this together? Great. Let me just press the cough key again, and now all three of us are talking together. You can access the directory of your contacts by pressing the contacts soft key when the phone is in idle state. From here, you can initiate a call directly to the contact. And lastly, I'm going to talk about call forwarding. For example, I'm going on vacation next week and Tessa will be covering my calls while I'm out. Start with the menu button, select features, then call forwarding. You can forward all incoming calls to your extension with unconditional forward, forward calls only when you're busy, or forward calls that you don't answer. I will do unconditional in this case. I'll switch this line to enabled and on the second line, enter the extension for Tessa and press the save soft key. When I get back from vacation, I'll go back to this menu and set the call forwarding to disabled. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.